All right, nucleophilic addition elimination reaction. So by the fact that it's called addition elimination, should make you think there's gonna be two steps involved, which is very true. So got the main reaction up here. The acyl chloride reacts with ammonia to produce an amide and hydrochloric acid. So the acyl chloride group, the carbon double bond to the oxygen, single bond to the chlorine. Amide group, carbon double bond to the oxygen, single bonded to a nitrogen. In this case, bonded to two hydrogens. So let's go for the mechanism. We're just going to stick with an R group attached to the acyl chloride, so it doesn't actually matter what it is. And let's think about the partial charges on that. We know that oxygen, very electronegative, so that would be delta minus. That will leave the carbon delta plus. We could do the same, to be honest, with the carbon and the chlorine. We also know from the name that it's nucleophilic. So we're looking for something with its lone pair that it can donate to the acyl chloride and something that can attack this positive carbon. That's what nucleophilic means. It's going to attack the positive carbon. What has a lone pair? Oh, look, our ammonia. So our ammonia has a lone pair. And that means our first step on this reaction will be the nucleophilic attack. We're going to have to attack this carbon. So draw the curly arrow going from the lone pair on the ammonia, on the nitrogen of the ammonia, to the delta positive carbon. Now, it's also an addition reaction. What do you know about addition reactions? The only one you've really done so far is electrophilic addition, and that's when you've got an alkene and you break open the double bond, and you can add something across the double bond. Do we have a double bond we can break open? Oh, look, yes, we do, between the carbon and the oxygen. So we're going to break open this double bond, and we're going to transfer the electrons over to the oxygen. So when I attach my ammonia, the carbon now has too many bonds and it wants to get rid of something. It does that by breaking one of the carbon-oxygen bonds and giving the electrons to the oxygen. Or the oxygen, the electrons are transferred, shall we say, to the oxygen. That leaves us with carbon bonded to an oxygen. Because the electrons have been transferred to the oxygen, the oxygen now has a negative charge. We haven't done anything with the carbon-chlorine bond, so that still exists. We haven't done anything with the carbon-R bond, so R still exists. But what we have done is formed or attached the NH3 onto it. Just like nucleophilic substitution with ammonia, the um, nitrogen has a positive charge. Because remember, nitrogen only really wants three bonds. It's now got an extra hydrogen attached to it. It's got an extra proton. So this nitrogen is now going to be positive. This gives us kind of a fun little molecule with a minus and a positive charge. For those of you that know anything about amino acids, which often show this, if you've got positive, if you've got two different charges on the same molecule, you call it a zwitterion. Great word, great for Scrabble. Just like a lot of these things are. So this stage, we're adding really the ammonia onto this. So this is kind of the nucleophilic addition stage. One day I'll actually decide whether I'm going to write nucleophilic with two L's or one. It should only have one, I think. Um, so that's the nucleophilic addition stage. Because we've started off with two things. We've added something on. We've broken the double bond. All we're doing in this first stage is addition. We haven't produced anything else. That means second stage is going to have to be elimination. So elimination is when you remove two of these substituent groups. What could we possibly remove? Well, this bit kind of is a little bit less intuitive, I suppose. But if you look at the amide that we're trying to make, we've got the carbon-oxygen double bond. But in this first addition stage, we broke the carbon-oxygen double bond. So we could add the ammonia onto it. So what happens on the second stage is the electrons that have been passed onto the oxygen actually 
return to the double bond. Well, return to the bond between the carbon and oxygen, which then becomes a double bond. So you break that bond in the first stage. In the second stage, you reform it. That means this carbon has too many bonds again, so it wants to break something else. So what's it going to break? We're going to remove the chlorine. Because chlorines and all halogens are quite good leaving groups. They're very electronegative. They're already hogging a lot of the electrons. So it's easy enough to transfer the whole electron pair to the chlorine and break that bond. Now, there's one other thing that we need to do at this point. With elimination reactions, you always lose two substituent groups. We've lost the carbon, um, the chlorine, sorry. What else are we going to lose? Well, we're forming HCl. So we're going to have to lose one of the H's. And now this chlorine will escape as a chloride ion. That means it will really want a hydrogen attached to it so it can make HCl. So what's going to happen is one of these nitrogen-hydrogen bonds is going to break. The electrons are going to return to the nitrogen. That will cancel out the nitrogen's charge. The hydrogen will escape and it will join the HCl. So what we're left with still haven't touched the RC bond. We've reformed the double bond with the oxygen. We've removed the chlorine. And we've attached an NH2. Plus a hydrogen. Ah. And a chlorine. So it's hydrogen chloride. Now, that's the mechanism you need to learn. The nucleophilic addition stage there. This is the elimination stage where everything disappears. And if you want to be, this is the equation that you need to learn, but if you actually want to be more correct about it technically, you don't really form that much HCl if you've got any excess ammonia. If you've got excess ammonia, the hydrogen chloride will react with the ammonia. The ammonia acts as a base and you form ammonium chloride. But they could add that onto the question if they wanted to, but they don't have to. Bye.